Hello, I'm Kim Agat Crumwoody, Director of Interprofessional Practice and Education for the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, and my presentation is on what to keep, deciding what remains online after successfully transitioning interprofessional education activities during the pandemic. In 2020, the University of Texas Southwestern School of Health Professions successfully transitioned a year-long active and face-to-face -face interprofessional development course called IDEAL to an online format during the pandemic. We used a holistic model incorporating online pedagogy, educational technology, and innovative solutions to maintain the active learning in the course. Assessments measured outcomes and student evaluations contributed to formative feedback and summative review of the activities. The new online course format was a success. Now the question was, what, if anything, should we bring back to a face-to-face -face environment as students began to return to campus after the pandemic? Let me tell you a little more about the IDEAL course. All first-year School of Health Profession students are enrolled in the HCS 5106 Professional Development course termed Interprofessional Development, Education, and Active Learning, or IDEAL. The IDEAL course is a year long across two semesters and lays the foundation for interprofessional competencies necessary for collaborative patient care. Don't worry about all of the text. This is the schedule for the year-long course and is meant to show you the number of different active learning sessions with different students from UT Southwestern and additional institutions. Activities include sessions with small and facilitated interprofessional groups, Convergence Day with over 800 students and 110 faculty from different institutions, interprofessional on-site nursing home assisted living visits staggered throughout the year, and an interprofessional simulation in the Simulation Center with over 500 students in, st in a standardized patients. During the course, students from programs such as Physician Assistant Studies, Physical Therapy, Prosthetic Orthotics, and Clinical Nutrition interact with students from other healthcare disciplines, including medicine, nursing, pharmacy, occupational therapy, and social work along with faculty facilitators in a small group setting. Topics include communication skills, teamwork, conflict management, cultural competency, and other interprofessional skills necessary to su succeed in collaborative healthcare environment. Students participate in very active sessions, as you can see here. Activities are designed for active learning from social constructivist lens. Many of the activities are team-based in small interprofessional groups and are collaborative. Some activities can also involve problem solving. Complex active learning activities that had to transition online included an assisted living facility visit incorporating an interprofessional team interview and assessment of an elder person living at the facility a large symposium-like activity with small interprofessional breakout groups using an escape room activity to build communication and teamwork skills, over 800 students and 110 faculty from different institutions participate in this activity, a simulation of an interprofessional team meeting for discharge planning of an elderly patient, incorporating a standardized family member trained with scripted responses, this activity has over 600 students now participating from different institutions. And a preclinical boot camp style symposium, including Team Steps Essentials and an interactive workshop on how to address harmful bias in the clinical setting. These transitions incorporated innovative solutions to keep the learning active and the students engaged. In order to decide whether to return an activity to face-to-face -face or leave in an online format, the following items were taken into consideration. Timing. The timing of the activity was, was crucial, and the current um, situation with regard to COVID. Uh, was it safe to bring the students back face-to-face? -face? What was the projected 
um, status and then was it even optional uh, to go face to face or online so that was I guess our number one consideration outcomes learning outcomes could we get um, just as good outcomes in person as we could online we knew um, that we had taken data and we were able to get uh, good learning outcomes for both but that's also a consideration logistics uh, location space number of students different institutions participating in a session scheduling budget um, was it going to cost more or less these were all important uh, cost as I just mentioned was it um, more expensive in person versus online or vice versa uh, that was a consideration and then evaluations we looked at the student evaluations from in person and from online as well as faculty feedback from um, both types of sessions so here you will see what activities we had decided to remain in an online format for the fall 2021 when we were planning um, and the main considerations why beside it so planning ahead we looked at convergence day there was over 800 students uh, from the different institutions and um, and uh, with standardized patients and we just decided because of the timing logistics and the cost it was less expensive to conduct it online that we were going to keep convergence day online we also found for the interprofessional nursing home and assisted living visits because of the timing we weren't sure how safe it would be to have the students still go into the nursing homes um, uh, looking forward or kind of with what was projected so we decided to leave those online as well when we looked at the spring semester when we were planning for the academic year uh, we decided to keep the interprofessional simulation for team discharge planning online we had actually formatted it to be somewhat of a telehealth visit uh, so that worked fantastic and we were able to keep and this year um, we're planning on almost 800 students to participate again in this or to participate in this simulation over the 600 we had last year um, and it actually worked out very well for timing logistics and we had great evaluations from the students and from faculty participating and then we thought for the interprofessional symposium that the student evaluations indicated they really wanted to have this in person if at all possible <coughs> excuse me in the past we had included faculty and preceptors but it was difficult for some to come on campus so we thought maybe based on the success of the online symposium we could use a high high flex format going forward with the students participating face to face and allowing preceptors and faculty to participate simultaneously online so this <coughs> excuse me was our plan so that was the plan for the academic 2021 2022 year but then the plan changed uh, we had the COVID-19 Delta surge and then the Omicron surge that we're in now Having successful online activities during the pandemic allowed for a flexible pivot back to the online for some of the activities for the fall 2021 semester due to the uh, COVID-19 Delta surge. And then again now for the spring 2022 semester during the Omicron surge. You see here outlined in green, we had to pivot a few activities back to online that we had hoped to do in person due to the Delta surge. We went back to the online format we already knew had worked for the August behavioral styles and communication and then the October leadership and professionalism sessions. We had already planned to keep Convergence Day as you heard earlier online and we, we stuck to that. Interestingly though in November things had eased up from the Delta surge and we were excited that we'd be able to go back to an in-person activity. Uh, but then a number of students and faculty actually expressed that they were not yet comfortable with face-to-face -face activity. So our teams worked together and conducted the session in what we call a high flex format where some people participated online and others actually participated in our team-based learning space. This allowed students and faculty to choose which way they wanted to participate in this session and the session was a success and we hope to publish on it later this year. 
For the spring semester, we're facing the Omicron surge, so we pivoted back to online for our January interprofessional case study. And we had already decided to keep the interprofessional simulation for team discharge planning in the online format, so we're good for that. We had planned for the April symposium to possibly be in a high flex format, and we know how, now a high flex can be very successful for interprofessional activity, so this is still a possibility. And as for the other spring sessions, we hope for face to face sessions, but we're confident if we have to pivot online. And honestly, we have the same overall sentiment for the 2022 2023 academic year next year. We'll plan the best we can, but we're confident in being able to adapt to the situation at hand. If you have any questions about our process or activities, please feel free to contact me at kim.hoggett at utsouthwestern.edu. Thank you.